Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be talking some more about hypergeometric distributions, and we're going to use them in a few application problems. So some real-world applications here. So let's start with this one here. A civic group of 40 people contains 12 people who support the Republican candidate for president. A committee of six people from this organization is going to be formed. Let X be the number of people chosen who support the Republican candidate. See if we can answer these questions. What type of distribution does X have? And identify any uh, defining parameters. What is the probability the committee will not contain a supporter of the Republican candidate? And what is the probability that the majority of the committee will be supporters of the candidate? So uh, see if you can work this out and come back when you think you have some answers. Press pause now. Well, let's see here. We have a fixed finite number of people in the population. So we have capital N population size of 40. Within that we have capital M 12 uh, successes. So a success is a Republican candidate here. Remember success is not necessarily good or bad. It's just what we're counting. And a committee of six people. That's a sample of size six. That's N lowercase n is six. And X counts the number of successes, and we're doing this without replacing them. So this is exactly the setup for a hypergeometric distribution. What's the probability that a committee member will not contain a supporter of the Republican candidate? That's just going to be the hypergeometric uh, PDF or CDF uh, with, with uh, X equals zero, no supporters. And then what's the probability that the majority of the committee will be supporters of the candidate? A majority is over half. So that's ha over half of the committee. So the committee is six people. Half of that would be three. A majority has to be at least one bigger than that. So this would be four, five, or six. So we want the CDF from four up to six. Now I'm assuming here that we have our hypergeometric distribution program programmed into the uh, calculator and so uh, the, the answer to the first one is this is a hypergeometric with n capital n is 40 lower uppercase m is 12 and lowercase n equals 6 and so the problem the committee will not contain a supporter is just the uh, we run our hgo cdf program and upper and lower are both zero so it's going to ask you first for the population size you'll enter 40 then it's going to ask you for the number of successes in the population when you enter 12. And then we're going to ask us for the sample size and you enter 6. And then it's going to ask us for the lower and upper limits and we're going to put 0 for both. So the probability that x is, the 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 0, meaning x equals 0, is actually it gives you both a fraction, exact answer, and a decimal here. And of course we'll just use the decimal as typical. Uh, so I rounded it off to, I guess, five places here. Point. 09815 or about just a little short of 10% about 9.8% what's the probability that the majority of the committee will be supporters of the candidate remember majority is more than half so it's got to be greater than 3 so that's from 4 to 6 so you run the same program with the same n m and n the uh, big uh, 40 for the population size 12 for the number of successes in the population and n for the uh, 6 equals 6 for the sample size and then for the lower and upper bounds for X the number of successes in the sample we use 4 and 6 there and we see that we get uh, a little over 5% there 0 0.05477 uh, similarly on the TI Inspire instead of a program we built in some functions so the first one right here is actually a PDF uh, although it would have worked for the CDF as well we just do HGO PDF 40, 12, 6, 0. And we get that same probability there. And we do uh, HGO CDF for the last one down here. And we do 40, 12, 6. And then we want to go from 4 to 6. So we do 4 and 6 for the last two numbers. Uh, again, it'll give us a fraction. If we do Control Enter, it'll give us the decimal version. Application 2. A baseball card dealer has a stack of 50 baseball cards. 11 of these are St. Louis Cardinals players on them. The cards are shuffled and placed into five sealed packs of 10 cards each. You decide to purchase one of these packs. 
Let X be the number of St. Louis Cardinals in the pack that you bought. What type of distribution does X have? And identify any defining parameters. Also, we want to know what's the probability the pack will contain exactly three cardinals, the probability that there will be at least four in the pack, and then the probability that there will be at most two cardinals in the pack. So see if you can work out those three probabilities as well as identifying the type of distribution. Go ahead and work on this now. Press pause. Well, let's look here. We've got a, we've got a finite sample size, finite population size. The population size of capital N equals 50. Within that 50, there are 11 successes. That's our capital M. And little n is our sample size, which is 10. And x is the number of cardinals that were uh, number of successes, in this case, cardinals, players, cards that we're going to be selecting and uh, that are in the sample, of course. And then uh, notice this is done without replacing them. So we don't count the card more than once. These are actually 10 different cards. So this is exactly the setup for a hypergeometric distribution. Now for these probabilities, we can use our hypergeometric uh, function or program. So remember, once again, big N is 50, big M is 11, and little n is 10. We use our HGOCDF program. Probably that X is 3. Uh, we run it. First thing it's going to ask for is population size, enter 50. Next, it's going to ask for number of successes in the population, hit 11 and enter. And then the sample size is 10 and enter. And then it's going to ask us for lower and upper. In the case of x equals 3, lower and upper are both 3. So 3 to 3 inclusive is just 3. And that probability then is about 0.247, uh, etc. About 24.7%. What's the probability there will be at least four, four cardinals in the pack? Well, that's from four on up forever. Forever in this case is 10 because there's only 10 cards in the pack. So we want to know the probability that X is between four and 10 inclusive. Again, you run the program with the still 50, 11, and 10 for the first three inputs. And then for your lower put four and upper put 10. Uh, I don't have a screenshot here, but it's 13.5%. And then the probability there will be at most two at most, two would be two or less. So in this case, that's from zero up to two because there's nothing below zero. And so that would be running the program with lower is zero, upper is two. And that's about 0.618, et cetera. So about 61.8%. Here's how it looks on the, uh, the uh, TI Inspire. Uh, probably the X equals three we could do with an HGO PDF. 50, 11, 10, 3, or we could have done it with HP, HGO CDF, 50, 11, 10, 3, 3, and that would give you the same answer. Uh, this one here is between 4 and 10, so that's HGO CDF, 50, 11, 10, 4, and 10. And the last one from 0 to 2 is HGO CDF, 50, 11, 10, 0, 2. And then the... Uh, this one I just did enter and it came out the fraction. If I do control enter, it comes out with a decimal. Most of the time we're going to need a decimal here, so we'll just do control enter. All right, here's another example. Suppose there are 100,000 registered voters in a city. 25,000 of them support candidate A for mayor. A survey of 20 voters was taken. Let X be the number of voters surveyed who support candidate A. What type of distribution does X have? And again, identify the identifying the defining parameters. What's the probability the committee will contain less than eight supporters of candidate A? What's the probability that the first person surveyed is a supporter of candidate A? What would the probability of selecting less than seven candidate A supporters be if the probability of selecting a supporter is 0.25 for each person selected? Notice the last one, the, the distribution would then be binomial instead of hypergeometric, which is what this one is here. So see if you can work out these, come back, press pause. So this is actually hypergeometric situation. The population size is 100,000. M, the number of successes in the population is 25,000. And little n is 20, which is the uh, sample size. So you can use your HGO CDF program. We want the probability that less than 8, so that's between 0 and 7. So when it gets time for uh, the inputs, the first one's going to go in as 100,000. Next one's 25,000. 
the third one is 20, and then the last two, the lower and upper, will be 0 and 7. And that turns out to be about 89.821%. What's the probably the first person surveyed is a supporter of candidate A? Well, that's M divided by N. So that's 25,000 divided by 100,000 is 0.25 or 25%. Now, what if instead of doing this as a hypergeometric, we decided to do it as a binomial distribution and just pretend that the probability of success each time is 0.25? Now, that's not actually correct because the probability of success changes slightly each time because we're not doing these with replacement. We're doing them without replacing them instead. But uh, if you notice, if we pretend it's binomial with the same n and p, 0.25 for p and n is 20, we notice we get something very similar. You can do a binomial uh, PDF uh, with n is 20, p is 0.25, and x is 7, and you get about 89.819%. A little different than this, but not too far off. Okay, here it is on the calculator, uh, Inspire calculator. Here's the hypergeometric CDF. 0.89821006435 as far as that calculator will go, whereas the binomial CDF with the same N and P is 0.898188, etc. And if you notice, these will agree up to, let's say, four digits because 0.898 is the same. This is 21, so that rounds off to a 2 in the fourth digit. This is 18, that rounds off to a 2 in the fourth digit. So at least to four, well, to four digits, these agree. And so we see that's a, you know, that's pretty good. So that means a binomial distribution is a pretty good approximation of a geometric distribution in this condition, in this uh, example. So uh, in general, a geometric distribution, um, and that should say hypergeometric, not geometric. And in general, a binomial distribution is a good approximation of a hypergeometric distribution if, if uh, capital N is large and N little n over capital N is small. So if the population size capital N is large and the ratio of sample size to, to population size little n over big N is relatively small, then this is a good good uh, approximation. So in other words, if you've got a big population and you're only sampling a fairly small fraction of it, say less than 10%, then this is a, a pretty good approximation then. And we see here, yeah, it's quite good. It, it, uh, it agrees up to four decimal places on the probability we were interested in. Suppose that 45% of the voters nationwide support the Democratic candidate for president. A random sample of 40 of these voters is taken. Let X be the number of voters sampled who support the Democratic candidate. What type of distribution does X have? And what is the probability that the sample will contain more than 20 supporters of the Democratic candidate? Well, actually, technically, this actually is a hypergeometric distribution because there is some finite number of voters out there nationwide. But it's huge, and we don't know what it is. So the fact that we don't know what it is means we can't really use a hypergeometric distribution. But that's not a drawback here because... Uh, it's so big, and a random sample of 40 is so small compared to how many voters are out there altogether, that this might as well be a binomial distribution. And so that's the way we're going to work it. We're going to work this as if it were a binomial distribution. So we'll use a binomial distribution with n equals 40 and p equals 0.45. Okay, so more than 20 means the probability that x is greater than 20, which is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 20. So that's 1 minus binomial CDF 40, comma, 0.45, comma, 20, which is about 21.3%. That's so you, anytime you have a, a probability to the right on a binomial or, or hypergeometric, or binomial or geometric, on a TI-84, 
you're going to have to do a 1 minus a binomial CDF because the CDF on a TI-84 is truly a CDF. That is, it always gives the probability from where you are, what input you put in, to the left. So this binomial CDF will find the probability from 20 down all the way, which is all the way is to 0. So this is the probability that x is between 0 and 20 inclusive. That's what we don't want it to count. We want to count the stuff, the other stuff, which is from 21 up. So we do 1 minus that. Now on the um, TI Inspire, it's not technically a, a true CDF because a true CDF would give you a probability from 0 up to an input. But it's actually the probability between two inputs inclusive, which actually is, works out a little bit easier for us to actually enter. So it's just binomial CDF. Again, in both cases, you give it N and then P in that order. And then here we give it the lower and upper, which is 21 to 40. And this is the stuff we're keeping, 21 to 40, whereas the 0 to 20 is the stuff that we're not keeping, so it's subtracted from 1. But either way, we get about 